Hi, and welcome back to part two of this series about IFR holding procedures. Picking up from where we left off last time, we are inbound to the Watcom VOR on the 250 degree radio, cleared to hold northeast on the 020 degree radio, non standard, all turns left. This is going to be another offset entry. Upon reaching the VOR, we need to track out at least 30 degrees more than 020. Since I'm currently flying 070, which is 50 more, I figure I might as well just fly straight ahead to 1.4 cross track and then square around to the heading of 020. I will then fly out to a diagonal distance of 2.6 and then turn inbound. We are under 3 miles from the station now, so I will set my HSI to the whole track of 200 degrees and navigate the rest of the way using number 2. Just a quick ground speed check before we get to the VOR. Yep, 131 knots, that's what I thought, so the wind is calm. I'm just waiting for the number 2 flag to flip. There's station passage. Time, turn. I'll go straight ahead. Track. Confirm the HSI set to 200 and set number 2 to 200. Throttle. Fine tune for 120 knots. And talk. We would report entering the hold. I'm watching my cross track as it increases. I can't wait until it reaches 1.4 to make my turn. I will turn to 020 when the cross track passes 1.2. As I reach 1.2 cross track, I roll into the turn. Now I am waiting for 2.6 miles to turn in. At 2.3 I set the bug. There's 2.6 and we roll into the turn. As I roll out, I get my finger ready on the timer. And I start the time exactly as the distance reaches 2.2, so I know that this will be exactly a one minute inbound leg. There's no need to complete this leg. By now, you should be as convinced as me that if the distance is correct, then the time will be correct. So we will reset now for another hold.
We are back, and this time we are cleared to the Abbotsford NDB on an inbound track of 020 degrees to hold southwest on an inbound track of 060 degrees. This will be a direct entry. Often pilots who haven't tried it before think that direct entries are really easy. All you have to do in principle is make a right turn to the outbound heading of 240 degrees upon station passage. But because of our direction of arrival, our momentum will carry us too far north and we will wind up out of position like this unless we pay attention to our cross track during the entry. Ground speed check. Yep, still 131, so the wind is calm. For any beholds, you'll notice that I do not set the HSI up before I get to the station. I prefer to use the HSI to track all the way to the beacon. I will then set the HSI during my 5 T's. So what I am going to do is turn right, but only to a heading of 220. In other words, I will crab out 20 degrees. I will then watch my cross track and square around to a heading of 240 once I have a cross track of 1.4. After that, all I have to do is wait for 2.6 miles and turn inbound. I am now waiting for the flag to flip. There it goes. Time. Yeah, time. Now turn. I set my heading bug to 220. Track. No rush notice. I set the HSI to 060. There is no point setting OBS number 2. Throttle. Fine tune a bit for 120 knots. And lastly, talk. We would report entering the hold. Notice that even now, well into the turn, we are still north of the hold track. Just as we had expected, momentum is taking us well north. As I roll out on the outbound heading, I note that my cross track is only 0.8, so I'm glad I decided to crab out. I now wait for cross track to increase to 1.4. I can start my timer of being the station, but only as a backup. I'm going to turn inbound at 2.6 miles, so I won't even show the timer on the outbound leg. Coming up to 1.3 on the cross track, so I will turn to heading 240. Cross track 1.38, good enough for me. At 2.3 miles, I set the heading bug and get ready. There 
is 2.6 and I roll into the turn. This should work out well. As I roll out, I get my finger on the timer. Watch the distance. If you noticed, I started the timer pretty much right on 2.2 miles. So once again, we know this will be a one minute inbound leg. There's no need to finish this demonstration, so we will reset for the final demonstration in this series. We are back for our final hold entry. This time we are inbound to the Watkin VOR on the 030 degree radial, cleared to hold southeast on the 130 degree radial, non-standard, all turns left. This will be another direct entry, but this time our direction of arrival presents a different problem. In a sense we don't have enough momentum this time. If we turn directly to the outbound heading at the VOR, we will be inside the hold like this. The controller is calling and we are cleared to descend to 4,000, balance unchanged. Since I am still 8 miles back from the BOR, I will keep my speed up for a while and start the descent. Back to discussing the hold entry. My plan is basically the same as last time. Rather than turn directly to the outbound heading of 130, I will turn to 150. I will then fly that until the cross track is 1.4 and join the outbound leg at that point. We are now 5 miles from the VOR and I will start slowing to 120. Slowing while descending is a good exercise for you to practice. Three and a half miles to go. I will set my HSI to the inbound hold track of 310.
two miles to go, speed is almost at 120. Because of the lower altitude, true airspeed will be a bit less than at 6,000. But I want to do this hold a couple thousand feet lower so I can show you that the speed difference is not enough to get excited about. See, 128 compared to the 131 we had on the previous holds. So we can use all the same dimensions we had been using up to now. Four hundred above, and I am waiting for the flag to flip on number two. There it goes. Time. I start the timer even though I don't need it. Turn. I set the heading bug to one five zero. Track. The HSI is already set, but I set number two to three one zero for backup. Throttle. One hundred above. Level at four thousand and talk, we would report entering the hold. As I roll out, my cross track is about 1.1. I will wait for it to come up to 1.4. As my cross track reaches 1.3, I turn to the outbound heading of 130 degrees. As I roll out, my cross track is 1.35. I obviously turn a smidge early, but not enough to be of concern. At 2.3, I set my heading bug to 310. There's 2.6 and I roll into the turn. Watch the timer as I roll out. Exactly 2.2 again. So once again, this will be a one minute inbound leg. Well, that brings us to the end of part two of this series. In part three, we will introduce the theory of how wind affects the dimensions of a hold. Then in part four, we will be back here doing the same hold entries, but with a stiff wind. So I hope to see you again. Until next time, so long for now.